I have this confession I need to make. I am terrible with memorizing scripture. I don't have a fish sticker on my car. I can't stand the Christian radio station. I cuss like a racehorse. Racehorse? Sailor. Sailor. I spend most of my day in a relatively godless place. I'm pragmatic. I love science. History. I might not seem the best candidate to put forth as a Christian. And I won't make you a lot of promises, but I will make you this one. I am deeply flawed, and you will see it. And on this vlog, you will not be hit over the head with my high and mightiness, my own righteousness. I am no Duggar. The issue with putting anyone on a pedestal is that they eventually will fall. They're destined to fall. And I don't believe any of you are going to put me on a pedestal, knowingly. I will actively campaign against myself. But in all honesty, I also don't intend to shy away from it. While I won't be bashing you over the head with it, I certainly will be talking about it. The pastor's name is Ernie. And you might be thinking, that guy looks really familiar, and that's because he's in Mumford & Sons. I think. I mean, I hope so. That's one of the reasons we chose Sojourn. We were at the Near Perfect Church, a church called Stonebridge. There's nothing wrong with this church. Worship was fantastic. The sermons were fantastic. The people were totally cool. And yet we left. We left to find this tiny church plant two minutes down the road, meeting in someone else's church. And here's why. You see, we screwed up. We worked in a church. And after leaving that church, we went through a period where we just wanted to be filled, not to pour out. And we found ourselves four years later in an incredible church, but deeply lonely. And it was our fault. We hadn't built a community. We hadn't included ourselves in a community. See, communities are more complex than just friends. Communities are when friends are friends of friends. It builds this web. I feel like I've warned you that I like to build constructs. And what I'm working towards here is a formula for community building, which might seem odd. And let me be clear, the numbers don't matter. What matters is the formula itself. Sometimes the formula is the output, not the numeric values. Okay, so where do we start? The first is every relationship is independently managed. Each relationship that you have with another person is between you and that person. And the sum of all those relationships creates a community. And so the question becomes, how do I choose my community? How do I choose who I independently hang out with? If only there was a formula. See, I have a formula that who you choose to hang out with is actually the function of two separate component formulas. The first part is what I call your friendship coefficient. It's going to be represented by X to the FC. <clears throat> this indicates how close of a friend you are with somebody. And the second portion is availability. In other words, you might have a great friend, but if they're never available, you'll never hang out with them. So then one must ask, well, how do you calculate one's friendship coefficient? I believe there are two separate components of this as well. The first is a function of your likeability. Like, like a, wait, hold on, I gotta, gotta figure out how to spell this right. Uh, Google, I'm gonna take this time to enjoy the epic music I've chosen to place above a math formula. I, listen, it's math. I had to do something to make it more, so, yeah, there you go. That's, I'm pretty sure that's how you spell it. And then. Oh yeah, alright, like a bill, I'm not good at spell. It's an L. That's an L. Alright. This next part is the reason why we left Stonebridge. It's a variable which represents the cumulative amount of one shared experiences with another. Times a function of their likability once more. Let me dive deeper. And I'm running low on epic music, so we need to finish this right here and now. 
It is my belief that one of the core central parts of your relationship with another human being is going to be as you had positive and negative experiences, whether or not they were a part of it. Not necessarily the cause that would affect your likability, but simply there for the positive and negative events in your life. And being present, accumulate a set of shared experiences. I've run out of epic music. Now you realize that we're doing math. The epic music was meant to mask that. The point there is that even a bad experience, the loss of a loved one, financial hardship, when you share that experience with a friend, with a person, it begins to bind you. It's an absolute value, even though it was a tough experience. By sitting on the sidelines at Stonebridge, what we essentially did was was not build up any shared experiences. And so our relationship suffered, and that was our fault for not being engaged in the life of those around us. We wanted to go somewhere that needed us, that we needed them to strive and struggle together. That's why we chose Sojourn. So in review, the strength of your friendship, who you're going to choose to hang out with, is directly correlated to this bond you feel, how likable they were during a set of shared experiences, plus how likable they are in general, modified by their availability. And within that formula, there's a hundred different things that we can explore and probably will explore over time. But my point here is that the reason we changed churches is because we had not shared experiences enough to create the bonds that made us part of a community. And that was our fault. I will add these disclaimers. That likability function is different and defined differently for everybody. As we've already covered, I prefer know-it-alls and people who belong to Mumford & Sons. And the last point I want to make is I think availability is a thing that trips the most people up. It's a thing that in the modern day, we have too many options, too much stuff going on, and we just don't make ourselves available. Our others don't make themselves available to us. And at the end of the day, availability is a thing that trips up more people than anything. So my encouragement to anybody watching Red Paisley and Holland when you get older, make yourself available. I may or may not have gone to this school.